How many plagues were inflicted upon Egypt in the Book of Exodus? The Book of Exodus recounts the story of the ten plagues inflicted upon Egypt as divine judgments aimed at securing the liberation of the Israelites from slavery. These plagues, sent by God through the prophet Moses, are depicted as miraculous signs of God's power and sovereignty over creation. The plagues progressively escalate in severity, culminating in the death of the firstborn sons of Egypt. The ten plagues are, 1. Water turned to blood, 2. Frogs, 3. Gnats or lice, 4. Flies, 5. Livestock diseased, 6. Boils, 7. Hail, 8. Locusts, 9. Darkness, and 10. Death of the Firstborn. Each plague serves as both a judgment against Pharaoh's hardened heart and a demonstration of God's faithfulness to his covenant people. The ten plagues represent a dramatic showdown between the God of Israel and the gods of Egypt, showcasing the power and authority of Yahweh over all creation. Which prophet was known for being swallowed by a big fish? Jonah, the reluctant prophet, is famously known for his encounter with a big fish, often interpreted as a whale, after attempting to flee from God's command. The Book of Jonah, one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament, recounts the story of Jonah's disobedience, his subsequent stormy voyage, and his miraculous deliverance from the belly of the great fish. Sent by God to prophesy against the city of Nineveh, Jonah instead attempts to escape to Tarshish by boarding a ship. However, a violent storm ensues, prompting the sailors to cast lots to determine the cause of their misfortune, which ultimately leads to Jonah being thrown overboard and swallowed by a large sea creature. After three days and nights in the belly of the fish, Jonah repents and is vomited onto dry land, where he fulfills his mission to prophesy against Nineveh. Jonah's story serves as a powerful reminder of God's sovereignty, mercy, and willingness to extend grace even to the most disobedient of individuals. His experience in the belly of the fish symbolizes repentance, deliverance, and the opportunity for redemption. What was the name of the garden where Adam and Eve lived? The garden where Adam and Eve lived is commonly known as the Garden of Eden. Described in the book of Genesis, chapters 2 and 3, the Garden of Eden is portrayed as a lush and paradisiacal sanctuary created by God as a dwelling place for the first human beings. It is depicted as a place of abundance, beauty, and intimacy with God, filled with diverse vegetation, rivers, and trees, including the Tree of Life and the Tree of the Knowledge of Good and Evil. Within this idyllic setting, Adam and Eve enjoyed perfect communion with each other and with their Creator, free from sin, shame, or death. However, their disobedience to God's command not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil resulted in their expulsion from the garden and the introduction of sin and its consequences into the world. The story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden serves as a foundational narrative in Judeo-Christian theology, exploring themes of temptation, disobedience, and the human condition. Who was the first king of Israel? Saul, a prominent figure in the biblical narrative, was anointed as the first king of Israel by the prophet Samuel. Saul's reign marked a significant transition in Israel's history, transitioning from a loose confederation of tribes governed by judges to a centralized monarchy. Although Saul initially displayed promise as a leader, he later succumbed to pride, disobedience, and spiritual decline, leading to his eventual downfall. Despite his shortcomings, Saul played a pivotal role in Israel's early monarchy and the establishment of its territorial boundaries. His reign is chronicled in the books of 1 Samuel and parts of 2 Samuel, providing valuable insights into the complexities of leadership, power, and divine sovereignty. Saul's tragic story serves as a cautionary tale of the perils of pride and disobedience, highlighting the importance of humility and obedience in leadership. How many disciples did Jesus have? Jesus had 12 disciples, whom he personally selected to accompany him during his earthly ministry. These disciples, also known as apostles, served as intimate companions, students, and emissaries of Jesus, sharing in his teachings, miracles, and mission. The 12 disciples are, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, John, brother of James, Philip, Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Matthew, also known as Levi, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, also known as Judas, son of James, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed Jesus. Each disciple brought unique backgrounds, personalities, and perspectives to their collective experience with Jesus, contributing to the diversity and richness of the early Christian community. Their relationship with Jesus transformed their lives and empowered them to become bold witnesses for the gospel after Jesus' ascension.